Welcome back to the ATK Pro Series brought to you by Kailami 9 Hour MSA Assetto Corsa. Assetto Corsa Competizione, of course, the game we're on right now. My name is Ernest Page, and if you've just joined us, we are at Zandvoort in the Netherlands for round three of what has been a fantastic, fantastic racing day so far. We've also got this week for the first time AMD, Elgato, and Corsair joining us as our proud, proud sponsors to make this event possible. Now, we've just finished our Pro-Am race, and what a race it has been. And in the commentary box, the virtual commentary box, I'm joined by Marius. Marius, I'm still recovering from that race we just saw. This is what happens when you go from an airfield two weeks ago at Silverstone to the sand dunes this week, um, to old school circuits steeped in history. What's interesting for people that have just joined us, both of these circuits, Silverstone and Zunford, came into being in 1948. Historic racing on a track that is unforgiving. Get it wrong, you're in the dunes, you're plugging a dike, there's no room for error. Super committed sections, and it's a circuit that everyone's been talking about in 2019 because after 35 years, Formula One is back 2020 at the circuit, and you can thank Max Verstappen for that. A couple of changes to the circuit, which we won't really have on this game, and not in terms of the corners, but just in terms of widening and banking certain corners, in particular the final corner onto the start-finish straight. But it is a circuit that, for drivers to get the setup right and to get the rhythm right, is difficult in one qualifying run, let alone a 50-minute race. And uh, we saw a fantastic pro race. Jonathan, we thought there'd be lots of uh, work for you from a, a race official and steward perspective, but actually not. The drivers did what they needed to do and left each other space, and the racing was actually clean. Yeah, absolutely. We, You know, the few incidents that we, we did experience, a lot of that was uh, racing incidents, but, you know, nothing, nothing severe, nothing that's going panic our our stewards too much but yeah fantastic racing the top five guys were all in it for the win um we saw a few mistakes that chopped and changed the top there and fantastic racing from everybody leon leroux of course our winner there in an aston martin your choice of car at the moment marius i wonder how the aston's going to do in the pro category at the moment we've got a couple of audis in the mix there we've got a couple of porsches in the mix uh, I'm looking forward to seeing well, if we're going to see a little bit more of a mix-up and not a Porsche Cup this week. Well, can I can I tell you a little shout-out to Talking Aston Martin, Donnie Miller, who was obviously Pro-Am last week, has qualified for the pros this week. If you've just joined um, our pro series, how it does work is like you're not committed and you know, you're racing as a pro week to week. You've got to go through seeding runs, so it keeps the drivers super involved. So we had a winner in an Aston, Leon LaRue, as you said, um, in winning pro and he's asked and now we've got donnie miller who was um running pro am two weeks ago and up with the pros so who knows the aston just seems like a car that is really uh, neutrally set up it seems quite consistent in its characteristics the same thing with the audi um ernest you spent time driving the port and the audi and felt the same thing um we know the amgs are pretty tricky through here because of the massive elevation changes the blind rises, the banking, the cambers on the corners. It's very easy to get a car unsettled here as you're lifting off for a corner. Well, another person in the midfield, as you said, driving the Mercedes is Jason Webb. He did a 135.2, the drift champion. And Bruno Cadley, also in a Mercedes, did a 134.9. So if we look at the top 12, all of them in the 34s, separated by a second, this yeah. is going to be some insane racing today, man. Well... 
Happy days because we chatted with our, our, our back-to-back winner, Zaire Essa, after, oh. after he wrapped things up at, at Silverstone. And, you know, he was expecting things, competition to get closer and closer. And have a look at that. I mean, literally nothing in it between him and Jordan. You remember Jordan was the first time we saw him last uh, two weeks ago at Silverstone in the Audi. A couple of incidents dropped him back, but he still came back very, very strong um, to, to finish in fourth. Uh, and I think there is going to be a lot of pressure on Zahir here at, at this race. He did tell us how difficult it is to get the tyres on that Porsche to last for 50 minutes. So I think it's going to be a bit of a mix-up. I don't think it's going to be plain sailing like we've seen in round one and two. And Jordan's also, um, his brother Cody has come to the party in another Audi. And straight away is there, seeding in seventh. So, Wow, it's going to be it's going to be interesting, and and what for me is is the best part is just to see you mentioned Motorsport South Africa getting involved as a, as a series sponsor because for them they they're acknowledging the critical role that sim racing plays as a as an actual racing formula, and uh, I caught up um, last week with Vic Maharaj, who not only is a race engineer and been a successful team owner, but obviously sits on the committee of Motorsport South Africa, and this is uh, this is what he had to say. Vic, just uh, MSA's position on, uh, on on sim racing. Obviously, you guys are, are partnering with us on the series. Um, that's a big step forward. We believe it is a valid arm of motorsport. And the reality is, at the end of the day, for us, the, the greatest success story would be, as we say, we get the crossover of, of Joe Public from the sim racing world into the actual racing world and similarly with the engineers. And if we can somehow facilitate that process, that would be a a massive step for, for motorsport in general and, and MSA. And yes, we do acknowledge that it is an important facet of, of motorsport. Um, but yeah, you know, the thing is that we're always being asked the question as MSA, when are we going back racing? And the reality is we're trying to get back there as soon as we possibly can based on government directive. It's a fluid situation. It's changing nearly every day. We're on it. And we are cognizant of the fact that SMEs are the lifeblood of our, of our sport. And we need to try and ensure somehow that they survive. And the reality is that we are engaging with the FIA on an ongoing basis, FIM on an ongoing basis, to try and just make sure that we get back to racing. I think we want to assure our, our membership that uh, we're doing everything in our power and just going to be patient with us because at the end of the day, as soon as we know exactly what's happening, we will communicate it. What, what actually prevents us having a race at Kailami and having a, an e-sport race at the same time, doing the same event and replicating the event? Well, well, I mean, look, I mean, that, that is the plan with a series is that, you know, we started, we started the first round at Kyle Army and the 12th round will be at Kyle Army and the idea is that that will kind of coincide with the Kyle Army nine hour. Obviously, it won't be a nine hour race, but that is, that is, that is, that, that is the plan. Have you, have you watched any of the online sim racing? Have you any, watched any yeah, of the I watched, um, I watched, I got the links for the event. Um, yeah, it was very impressive. Very, very impressive. And the production is slick. It's really, really cool, you know, and I think that's the important thing as well. It's TV. I mean, that, that's, what yeah. I've, that's what I've realized now. I kept saying, like, if, if somebody, if your kids walk past and glance at the television screen, they say, oh, Dad, there's racing on. I mean, that is where, that's where it's got to. And I think that's what I was saying earlier. Um, it's no longer this closed community of gamers. The minute that COVID kicked in and you've got Max Verstappen and Kelvin, those sort of guys racing, mm -hmm. you have a look now that they've got the proper commentators that are doing the commentary with the international races and they're producing it like a proper TV show. It's, it's actually un it's unbelievable. Back in game, straight into qualifying, we go on board with Abschmeer now, that's uh, Abschmeer there in the Porsche. So far, four Porsches up front, but no times yet. I don't think that's going to be the lay of the land, not at all, because the Sherat brothers are going to have something to say about that. Jordan Sherat, yesterday, the fastest guy all day long, Zahir Esarox up, pips him by two one hundredths of a second. 
Yeah, Jason Upsmeyer wants to uh, wants to make uh, make things right after two weeks ago. A bit of an incident that um, yeah, was all resolved. The drivers were all happy with how it, how it played out, but it did see him obviously plummet down the the order. Great comeback drive to to score some points, obviously, but hoping for a better result. Yeah, he was he hasn't really had the the, the pace in terms of the seeding runs, but it all comes out of qualifying today. But like you said. Before we went to qualifying, top 12 are all running 34s. Um, we know that the cool thing, Jordan is now joined by his brother Cody. So it's always cool having a teammate who you can share information with, share setup with. He's come out of nowhere and seeded as a seventh fastest. So I think it's going to be Audi putting a bit of pressure on the Porsches. Um, you said you chatted with Zaire, who hasn't spent too much time around Zanfort. Uh, do you believe him? I think that's nonsense. I don't know. The thing is that Zaire seems so nonchalant. He's so cool, so relaxed all the time. Um, basically, what he said was that he's taken the, the setup that he had at Silverstone. Oh, as Zaire Issa just loses it there on the downhill section. Um, this is the section you were talking about. Uh... That I think. Uh... To make a rob, to make a corner. So it's like a, you've got a bit of a short straight as you come out of Hunserich and you can go wheel to wheel over this crest and then into this right left right combo, which is really, really tricky. And you've got to be fully committed and then you're heavy under braking for Schleiflux. So if you get it wrong there under braking, there's no nice little tarred runoff area like a shopping center that we see on the new silly circuits. You know, yeah, you get punched. You know, you're off the racing line. It reminds me a little bit of East London. You know, some big balls and commitment corners, and if you get it wrong, you're on the grass and you, and you pay the ultimate price. And we saw that in Pro-Am. It's a difficult circuit to overtake. Um, there are opportunities, but you've got to be decisive. There's no kind of half committed. You've got to have a full go at it. But we saw Zaire do this um, two weeks ago at Silverstone, also going off, um, obviously being pushed by Charles Wilkin, it was then. Um, but this is qualifying. They've got the opportunity to, to really try and get it. And I think you want to have a, a, a good qualifying position. You have to get a good, clean start and settle into your rhythm here because this is a track that is all about rhythm all about rhythm because it flows from one corner into the next as you go through the roller coaster you can see the the, the, the car goes left then right up the hill left then right oh, and Zahir is a millimetric up right up towards that white line over there this time getting that corner right and as you said last week he did spin out in the qualifying session similarly and still came back to put it on pole he is going to have some confidence knowing that he was still the fastest yesterday even though this time the gap is much closer at least in the seeding phase of the race yeah it's just you know i just i, I just, he, he is you're he's a cool customer i mean i just remember two weeks ago you know my my, my dogs were even cheering him along barking while <laughs> you were doing the in-car interview on his formation lap a cool customer and, you know when we chatted to him post race um after his win and he was just saying you know welcome to the the real world i mean this is what simulation racing has become is it is so realistic and so real and, and we see it in formula one you know the guys chatting to the drivers as they getting themselves geared up the guys are now realizing they've got to market themselves they've got to make themselves available for interviews you know we chatted with bernard king who finished second in the pro-am this is what it's about you know if you want to take this seriously as a as a, as a career which is what it is um there's the other side of the business too and uh, I, I just think he's a he's a cool customer he is out and out bliss fast he is so so quick um i still think he's my favorite for for the win we haven't seen him put under any pressure yet so we don't really know his race craft but we his real racing experience and that race doing the real thing going door to door so he's still my man to beat yeah, single seat experience as well for um, Zahir Essa. And currently now in first position with a 34.059. That's faster than his seating time of 34.077. And Shirat now two tenths of a second back. That's a big gap. Two tenths I mean, of a second. But he, if he breaks the 33s, that's, that's unbelievable. We spoke during the Pro-Am race. I mean, it's been 35 years since Formula One came here. And the previous lap record 35 years ago was Alain Prost Formula One. He was doing a 116. The circuit then was still 4.2 kilometers as it is now. But it was 19 corners as opposed to, what, 14, I think we've got now on the new on the new layout. Um, but that just puts into perspective the, the ground effects on the Formula One cars. It'll be amazing to see what the new cars do around yeah but for a gt3 car 
to be doing, oh, call it 33s. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. And the pace that these guys are setting, 34-0, is lap record, or at least world record pace. These guys here are some of the fastest drivers in the world at the moment on a set of Corsa on the circuit. So they should be quite proud. At least the top four guys were in the mix running those low 34s. It's fascinating to see the... Uh, sorry. It's fascinating to see uh, Essa already knocking a 34-0 as... Uh, that I think was quicker than his qualifying hot lapping time yesterday and so early in the qualifying and we're not even halfway through usually guys will work their way up to that pace. so will we see a 33 in this session I think so I think what he could do now is just take a chill go make himself a coffee just relax and let the other guys scrabble about it for a bit and then come back with three minutes to go and do the 33 I think that's probably what he'll do he is Maybe that start at the back of the grid. yeah he's, he's that cool a customer you know he, he, he really is but yeah I think we're going to have some very very good racing this because like you said uh, John earlier that these are really fast drivers guys that are pro yeah. they they at the flipping cutting edge of their of their craft and it was interesting following their bent and uh, and stuff on social media uh, after we did our little um, review of the incidents <laughs> with uh, with yeah. Ted and Ernest and myself and that they were just saying, obviously, it's in the real world, it's easier to go door by door to door with the car. But see, in the game, there's certain settings within the game that makes it a little bit trickier to position your car that close to another car. Um, yeah. and, and this is the level that these guys are now dealing with in terms of when they go racing. And a lot of the incidents we see are those incidents where it is about door to door and it's a little touch here and a little touch there, which in the real world, I think the way the car responds to that is different to the way it responds to in the car. But this is the level of professionalism that these guys are adopting. I mean, we're on board with that area, and it is master class. I mean, he literally uses every bit. This is my favorite part of the circuit. This is a super tube. It's a roller coaster, full on flipping commitment. Have a look at this section, blind over this rise, and then you go into the little right, left, right section here, heavy under braking, and uh, you get it wrong there. Have a look, that's gravel trap on the outside, and it's, uh, it's big problems for you. Makes his way through the right hand, and now indeed, Absolutely no repairing. Look at that, you've got to get all the way to the left hand side. And this section here, I mean, as you said, this is a master class here. You've got to stay on the sticky stuff. Where the surface is black, the track is set to optimum at the moment, so there's maximum grip available for the drivers. So they right. can actually see those black lines over there. And um, you've got to stay on those black lines. All we, the, the we, we saw in this, in that, in that prime race, we saw, I mean, that's the nameless uh, left that happened there, the old Vodafone corner. But you can go cars two cars through there so the guys that go to and dives you up inside on a break and you can stay wide yes. because when you get to what was the audi s um you've got the inside line so that's for us a very good opportunity for overtaking he has the catapult onto the the start finish straight now the new formula out which we don't have on the game that corner is now banked to like 21 degrees it's more banked than uh, it's like the old monza circuit it's flipping crazy and you chat with Max Verstappen and they reckon, no, listen, it is like literally a catapult down that straight. So it's foot flat and off you go. We obviously don't have it on this uh, on this game format now, but that's going to be amazing to watch when F gets there. Yeah, that corner is unbelievable. Even at the moment, these guys, most of them, especially the pro guys, are going flat through that corner. Total commitment, as you said. The this, this circuit is full of places where loads of commitment is needed. We're now looking at uh, Cody Shirak, the younger of the two Shirat brothers. 21 is the older brother and he's 17. And in the Audi at the moment, currently running top five, just seven tenths of the Zahir Issa. So all of these guys in the top five are currently in the 34s. Not as fast as they were yesterday, most of them, but uh, it's still early days, still 10 minutes to go. Let's still have a look. Your top eight all still within, or still doing 134. So the top eight's all in the in, in the game park there. But I think it's a very good move having both brothers um, race the same car because I think it just always helps. I mean, we get that you chat to the guys real racing. That's why there's a team, you know, because you can send one guy out with a different setup and the other guy tries something else or has the benchmark setup from Silverstone and you yeah. go and car to try something different for Zanford and you can always go back to your default and that's what's cool with them as brothers we know uh, Jason's got that as well they've got their teammates that work together they can share setups and I think that's what we're starting to see the guys are adopting this as teams and working together for sure it definitely makes the team a team entry is definitely stronger than a single entry nine times out of ten based on that fact alone yeah 
you've literally got double the amount of time that you can spend on setup. And guys like Bashir Jadwat and uh, Quake Classens, who are teammates, they do the same Porsche setup. They probably work on the setups together. They give each other feedback all the time. And you've got that sounding board to discuss, you know, what changes need to be made. And as I said earlier, these guys are using management systems, Motec management systems, to check everything from uh, uh, damper settings, uh, uh, throttle position, all that kind of data logging stuff. They've got access to that information, and the front run guys are using it. Yeah, listen, it's, I mean, that's how, that's how far this game has, has, has advanced. But, you know, the, the thing always is each driver has a slightly different driving style. And when you chat, like last year with the Carlo Minano, we chat to the, the, the racing drivers about... How do you guys set up a car to work for each of them with different driving styles? And you end up going with a car that for all of them. Because one guy might like a car set up this way and someone else wants it slightly differently. Whereas obviously now in a sprint race, they can make those adjustments. But I think it's always good to have one car that is running the setup from the previous round as your benchmark time. You've got a good result. You don't need to recreate the wheel. Your other driver can then sit and fiddle around with setups and say, listen, this works. I found this. And, and you can go back to the Motec system and see exactly on your lap time deltas the sort of uh, the sort of splits that you get. Yeah, we're having a good look at, at the split times now that give you an idea of where the guys are are setting their times but yeah we're going to be in for a fantastic race and this formula we've said it a few times but i know the people that might time i love the fact that you've got to come on a saturday seed for the race on the sunday because we've seen a couple of guys that have made the made the step up from pro-am last week to to pros we've got raymond duggan and uh, Donny miller i spoke about him right in the beginning he's uh, running in the aston martin and i thought aston martin could be a good car around this track we saw leon larue winning pro-am in it so um, nice to have those guys there. Also, Jason Webb, you mentioned him earlier. I mean, SA Drift Champ, monster athlete. Uh, he's in the AMG, which is a monster to handle around here. Yeah, Jonathan cleared that up for us, that it's not the 2019 spec, but actually 2015. So um, you look at the top racing drivers struggle driving that car in this game because it doesn't handle like the real car does. But you know with Jason, if it's going sideways, he's going to be the most comfortable. He, he, he's never looked out the front of a, a windshield before. <laughs> Funny thing yeah. about Jason, he actually started karting at first. So he's got that, that racing basis, and then he went full-time into drifting. And the racing thing is just a hobby for him. It's something he does for fun, but he happens to be quite good at it. And he's, he's only 1.3 seconds off the pace at the moment in the Mercedes. But still, this grid is so stacked. He's in 15th position at the moment. What a stacked field we're looking at uh, for this race today. Yeah, he said he, he messaged me earlier today because I like wanted to check to him about the Merc, and he said it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, he's gone and made that. He's gone and made that commitment, and I, I guess that's why we're seeing the variation in the pro ams. Is that you know the guys are kind of picking the car that they enjoy driving and it's nice to see a mixed grid but when you get the pros these guys are in it for real 12 rounds and and they've got to be consistent over 12 rounds sure they can throw away their two worst results uh, at the end of the season but they're all going to go with the car that's going to deliver the best results for them so it would be great and i'm sure we're going to see it uh, in the game that the cars are running like 2019 specs so so you know and that's why like Rafael Marcello and those sort of guys when they come and race some racing they do struggle because the cars don't quite handle the same whereas I'm assuming the Porsche seems to be and the Audi to be the ones that uh, that the guys are gravitating towards in the pros because they are consistent handlers uh, and they can get the best out of them even Shirat said that the Audi has or the, the Porsche has got outright pace on the circuit but I think what we saw this in the pro am race as well. Oh, Issa does a 134 flat, goes faster still. Oh God, just so give him a, give him a 33. I mean, 34.002, come on, are you kidding? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and here we look at those sector times again. And the middle sector is, uh, I think, one of the sectors that's so, so difficult to get. And look at the, uh, uh, Issa with the 31890 there. Shirat with a 32 1. So that's the space right there where Shirat is, he could gain the most time. And that middle sector is so difficult. That's the section we're talking about early on. We're going down that hill, incredibly tricky. But listen, look with that. We've got uh, in, in 11th place Bruno Cuddle. Uh, uh, thank you for clearing up how to say your name, Bruno. So we're not Kadila, you know, we, we cuddle. It's, it's, it's cud cuddly, cuddly. Cuddly, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't, know if he, I don't know if he's cuddly or not. <laughs> 
but hopefully he's not going to be cuddling with any cars on the track. But that's a big result seeing a Merck uh, up in 11th position. Also to uh, to to nil in the Ferrari there in 14th. But uh, the top 10 is dominated by the VW Group, Audi, and uh, and Porsche. But oh, yeah. yeah, nice to see nice to see um, a couple of Audis in there. Yeah, currently getting some setup tips from an actual works AMG driver to get that car dialed in over here. He's been spending a lot of time making sure the setup's right. As I said earlier on Shirat and his brother using the Motec system, he showed me the gra dampers and because the circuit is so bumpy, when you hit a bump, uh, it's going to upset the car, and especially this Audi. And I would imagine if this Audi is dialed in properly, it must be a fantastic car around this circuit. Easy to, easy year to drive in the same than the Porsche. And if he's able to stick with the Porsche, I think we might see something happening later in the race, but only time will come. It will be interesting on that, yeah. Yeah, John, that, that, that's a great point. Because, I mean, remember when we chatted to, uh, to Zaher afterwards, he said, listen, if he had a battle with 10 laps to go, he would have been struggling because he was he had no yeah. tyres left. And Jordan was on a proper charge through the field to get that fourth position at Silverstone. So he had pace at the end of the race. So, yeah. oh, it's going to be good. But Jordan, then look back at the race where we had the, we had the Audi leading and then he'd enter that first turn just slightly slightly overcooking it and that rear would just start to step up and i think maybe that was perhaps a setup um not an error but like a setup problem that he had where the car was just not set up for the um rear end grip as much as he'd have liked but so let's see Sharat, i'm sure will be all over the Off the start, you've got options to, to go around the outside. Um, there's also been a lot of talk about it's bizarre that pole position is on the left-hand side of the track and you've got a right-hander that comes up. But these old circuit layouts, um, it's all about grip on the line. So the guy that's starting in second, even though he's got the inside for the first corner, you don't have that same level of grip uh, from a starting position. So there are options through that turn one. I think if you do outbreak yourself, we actually saw him do that in that Audi, just keep it straight for as long as possible because you've actually got a bit of a rope, a bit of a, a slope to ride up before you try and turn. I think if you're running hot and you try and rotate it, the back's always going to snap when you're in a corner like that. So there's a lot of space to play there. You've got a wide exit as well. So fantastic circuit. It's so technical. It's, uh, it's a so, real drive. So technical. And that section you're talking about there, on, on the black stuff, as you make the right hand, as we go, what Chad White's running in right there. As you take that right hand, uh, I think he went up a bit high off the, the grippy stuff. And as you said, Jonathan, the setup at that stage wasn't working as well as he was expecting yeah. it to. I, I, it's an unusual place for that to happen. I haven't seen anybody else do it yet. And I'm wondering if that's going to be the threat for the Audis later on. This is such an interesting chess match we're seeing unfold here. And we don't know what's going to happen, at least when it comes to the tyre aspect of things. So, I mean, that, that's basically qualifying done. So have a look at that. He didn't get into the 33s that we were hoping for. Bashir putting in a great late charge. So securing second position. So it's a Porsche lockout on the front row with uh, Jordan in third in the in the Audi. And then it's, um, it's Porsche, Porsche, Porsche before brother Cody down in seven. So, you know, as expected, but well done to Bruno, the best of the, uh, best of the rest in terms of the Mercs there. And then Jason also coming up in 14th position. So a quite a good spread. Yeah, I think Jason will be happy. That's pretty, that's pretty much his fastest time he's done this weekend. So he'll be happy with that. As uh, we finish up with qualifying, um, we'll be back very shortly to chat some more about the racing and get started with the biggest race of the day, the pro race. We'll see you guys after the break.
and there you have it there you have it qualifying is in the bag we are 15 seconds away from our parade lap and Essa on top of the standings no surprises there but this time wasn't as easy as before he had to fight for this one didn't he Mario? Uh, yes or no I mean <laughs> po po point two if I remember point two is pretty much the gap he's had in both the previous rounds in qualifying it's never been like he's a second ahead but in the race he absolutely obliterates the oak so for me he gets another good start here and he gets a little bit of a gap you're not going to see him again that, that's my prediction because this is a track that rewards a, a consistent driver and, he, and he's been that indeed, indeed. Um, it's, it's, it's really one of those circuits yeah i i do, I do think I, i've got a lot of faith in uh, in jordan and his brother cody they've got some good pace in the audis and um Jason uh, Epsmeyer as well. He's, you know, pro proper, proper, consistent driver, and I think he'll be looking for good results after the disappointment of Silverstone. Oh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a hell of a race, uh, and I think there are a lot of guys further down the grid that are super fast that we're not even mentioning at the moment. But I guarantee you, during the race, we're going to be watching them because there's going to be racing throughout the field at Zandvoort. It's that type of circuit. It definitely is that type of circuit. And what is strange here, the overtaking maneuvers aren't that plentiful. We saw that in the previous race, but what does happen is drivers get pressurized into making mistakes and the action is thick and fast. Not necessarily malicious mistakes where guys, four guys take each other out, but the racing is very tight and very close. And as you said, it's going to take a cool head. And Essa has proven over and over again that he can be that cool head. But what I was pointing to earlier on was that Jordan Chirac has been the quickest uh, in, today in the seating the entire day, pumping laps out. Essa comes and pops him and does the same in qualifying. And now Jordan's in third position, everything to fight for with uh, Jadwa just in front. What an exciting start to the pro race. I think this is a great testimony to the old circuits that are kind of contoured off of, uh, off of the land because you don't have traditional, there's your hotspot for overtaking. But because of the nature of the circuit with the up and down, the undulations, I mean, the pressure, the pressure comes. I just imagine in the old days when the guys were sitting with the manual box. Sure. Can you imagine the pressure under braking with the gear shift, how easy it is to miss a gear change? You know, and nowadays in the new cars, it's boom, 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 and off you're going, through the, but you can't miss. But you imagine the old days, the pressure in these, you know? It's a different time, and that's one of the things that I do miss is uh, the, the, the ability to force that type of error. Um, it's not really a, a concern for these guys, at least not on that level now. Now these guys have to thread the perfect lap, lap after lap. In this case, they've got to do it for 50 minutes as they line up now. And another thing we mentioned early on was that it might be an advantage for Jadwa to be starting on the inside there because uh, we've got Essa starting in pole position on the outside. Now they make their way down the main straight in formation. The first of the Mercs coming into view there. The Ferrari is also not doing too badly here. A couple of guys in the Ferrari saying that the cars are feeling good. But the cars that we're looking at now, the two front runners, Jadwat and Essa on the front row of the grid, perfectly lined up. We've got green flag racing. Off we go. The flag is waving. Essa He's still in the lead. He's got him. Jadwat's got him. Oh, Jadwat yes. got well done but check it out two cars can go around the outside here because that turn one tarzan corner is banked and jordan oh, having a great contact. contact already oh the guys are getting racy this is what we needed to see remember what we said someone's got to get ahead to turn this into a race now we'll see zahir essa and if he can uh, if he can handle doing a bit of racing because we know he can lead yeah that is absolutely right Bashir Jawad now drive, in the through, lead. drive through cody so that was obviously struggling with uh, with getting into the right slot we know this is a mission if you're new to this game it's quite difficult easy to get yourself out of position in your in your pit slot and that's a drive through that is a real pity because he's going to be right at the back of the field you're not going to catch guys of this caliber and we needed him up there to uh, to help his brother yeah, Cody's been practicing all week trying to get dialed in for this race. He doesn't have the racing experience of his brother, but obviously getting coached by his older brother, he's been doing quite well. So that's a real pity to see that. And now the front three are going to be battling it out. We saw contact earlier on between Jordan Shirat and Essa, but the two of them holding it together so well. I mean, it's 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 a miracle nobody got, uh, nobody, uh, got tangled up coming out of that corner there. 
Oh, but that's muscling. Eh? I mean, the guys are coming out of out of out of turn one, and it's quite a tricky little run. And there's a little left king Gerlach corner, and then obviously you're heading into Hugenholt, which is where that contact was happening between those two corners. But that is going to happen in real racing. And, and look, the guys, all the cars are pointing in the same direction. You know, no one's no one's got off track. That's the difference between the amateurs and the pros. You know, that level of con they're anticipating it. And they've made the correction already. Well, Bashir Jambad with a rich history in sim racing. He's won a couple of sim championships. He runs a little bit wide there as uh, Essa gets under pressure from the Audi. They touch Man. again on exactly the same spot. Exactly the same spot. It's a different line and he's knocked him off. Have a look at this. Oh, Zahir's got some work to do here. So well done. Jordan saying, bud, my shoulders are better than yours. They're two different lines. Again, turn one, Tarzan corner, because it's banked, you can stick around the outside. And that's what the Audi's got a slightly different line. He's actually getting better drive out of that corner, which is giving him that side-by-side -side position heading into Gerlach. And there, two cars can go through there, as we've just seen. Mm. One lose out. This time, Zaire Essa. Something we haven't seen in two rounds. Zaire Essa in third position, not three seconds up the road. Unbelievable stuff. It's so great to see things shuffling up like this. And Rat totally committed to that move. He saw him try it in the previous lap, and it didn't work out this time. As he said, muscling his shoulders past into second position. Like Upsmeyer up is right there as well in uh, in fourth position. We expected a, a, a good race from him. Cool head on that guy. So um, it's, it's, gee, it's Porsche domination. I think he must be feeling quite uh, quite alone, old Jordan. <laughs> Because the next Audi is way back, Robert Whiting in eighth position. Um, and then obviously, Shaul Wilkin, real racing driver, was very, very good in uh, in Silverstone. We've got a bit of work to do. And that's AMG, well done to Cudley um, uh, in the top 10 at the moment. So good work. Yeah. Um, Wilkin, unfortunately, saying that he couldn't get that last second on that Porsche as the Audi has a, a peak down the inside over there we're saying some of the drivers were saying earlier that they weren't necessarily having a look to see uh, if they could get the take they were just checking to see what's going on in front when you're uh, uh, chasing on the circuit it's so difficult to see what's going on up ahead it's such a difficult technical circuit when you're alone but can you imagine uh, surrounded by 29 other cars yeah, but I think what's also cool here is, again, it's not always about making the overtake. It's putting the guy under pressure because if you just slightly miss your break point, uh, you run wide. That's the opportunity. That's the pressure. That was what Jordan was doing there. But I noticed him coming out of turn three, out of Hugenholtz. He actually took a bit of a curb and lost his drive. And that gives, uh, gave Zahir a good opportunity to, to have a run at him. But Zahir has been running a little bit wide on the exit of turn one. And that's been compromising his, his drive out. This last lap, he looked a lot better. Um, you have a look at how it turns in, it's tight, it's perfect, and that's what's giving him the good run out. Yeah, they're heading down to what was the old Audi Kink, the Audi S. Um, so this is another, what we predicted as a good place for an overtake move. Got a 45 right, heavy under braking, and then like a 180 left. So it's a, it's a really nice part of the circuit. This is that build up to the back straight where you want to build as much momentum as you can through here. An unbelievable section of the circuit there. We're going to be going to see some taking opportunities there later on as they make their way through the last two corners now onto the main straight. Ah, flat out through this corner, up into fifth gear now as the car touches the outside of the curb there. And now they make their way down towards the first corner, still in front, Bashir Jadwad. So cool, uh, Bashir Jadwad, able to restore, restore. See, he's run wide. He's Great a last and getting a bit of a nudge there. Yeah, I'll have a look up top there. I mean, Zaire seems to be running running a little bit wider on the exit of turn one. And I do think it's compromising his drive out of that corner. That Audi does hug the apex. And through Huggenhardt over here, through this turn three, it's very easy to just put your car on so no one can go anywhere. It's got to be follow my leader through there. So uh, Jordan seems to be doing that very well, putting his car in the right place. But this is a battle to have a look at here with uh, Leslie Olifants and Quade Clarsons having a full go. And just up ahead of them is, is Jason Upsmeyer. So this is this is great racing. A lot of Porsches. We've seen a puff of dust. That was I hear taking a, a bit of the track home with him. But um, he's trying hard. He doesn't like being in third, that's for sure. Not at all. As we now look at Quade Clarsons, of course, this is the teammate of Bashir Jabbar. He's currently in fifth position, putting a lot of pressure on Abs Mayer there in fourth position. I wonder what the next move will be. This is really, as you say, it's so interesting. Usually in, a, on, on, a, on in this sort of situation, somebody would be having a look down the inside all the time. But that's not the case. The guy hanging back, biding their time, putting on the pressure and waiting for mistakes. As we see now, down the inside there goes the Porsche of Leslie Oliphant. Having a look at Quade Clarsons now. 
and Morgan's right there as well, and eh? Morgan McCall just on the back of that. So as we saw in that first round, as the guys get themselves sucked into a dogfight, it really opens the opportunity for the guys behind. You get that mm. sniff of blood, you see yourself closing up, you know you're in there with a shout. So this is a freaking great battle here. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are kind of all split by nothing. And Robin nice. White in that uh, in that, the Audi just in the background there. So he's also seen with a shout here. These guys trip over each other, which we've seen does happen. Hey, Fasahi, we're looking at the replay now of Fasahi. Yeah, Arno, ah, it's a bit further, further back in the further back in the field. That's Arno Fasaki. I want to see if he's gone and got himself. We said there's going to be battles right the way through the field. Um, so it's nice to be able to have the split screen. We can see what's happening with the, the real action on track. And have a look up. I'm just looking at the timekeepers now. I mean, 0.6, 0.8. It's super, super close with our top three. So and then uh, a bit of a gap back to fourth place. So lots of battles to keep action on. So good job uh, to our director there keeping us... Uh, Keeping us covered. I need. I need four hours. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of action on track, and still no move from Abshmeyer or Cla from uh, Plifant at least. One of them now having a look at Classens and McCall coming up at the rear. McCall's got a front row seat. All the action over here. Morgan McCall, of course, the older brother of Junior McCall, who did so well to get a podium in the Pro Am series. Morgan now flying, flying Morgan an ex karting racer, and sponsored by Castrol Toyota at one stage in the karting series. So. Uh, He's got lots of uh, experience doing laps such as these. But look at that, it's a, great, it's a great shot there. Look at that train of cars behind Jason. And then obviously a gap to our top three. But what I've noticed is Bashir has got a, a one second gap now. Wow. That little battle between uh, Jordan and Zahir is, uh, is certainly playing to, uh, to Bashir's advantage in the lead. And that's what you want to do. Not worry about looking in your mirrors. With a second gap, he doesn't have to do that anymore. He can just concentrate on putting lap after lap together, getting into that rhythm. That is key on a track like this and key with a 50 lap, 50 minute race as well. We've got 10 minutes down, having like running wide over there, giving a, giving an opportunity to Leslie with drag. But yeah, you've got to thread the needle. You've got to be, you know, side by side stuff. You <laughs> but, no, um, no, not on the roller coaster. Not no, on the roller coaster. That's the pressure we're talking about. Very easy, yeah, under braking to, to run a little bit wide and you're in with a shout. Quade classes so far so good, but he is getting a little bit flustered by the driver behind him though, but that's exactly what the driver behind Leslie Gullifan wants. Sticking his nose in there, letting him know that he's there. All he needs is one chilly mistake as Klassen takes the wider line there. Uh, this the is actually my favorite part there. of the track. I'm starting to really fall in love with that because we saw a lot of action here. There were action. Two, there were oh, the Audi runs wide at the back there, Robert Whiting getting on the power a little bit early. Uh, it's, it's a very technical part of the circuit. It's the old right-hander was the, known as Renault. It's now nameless. And then the Vodafone is, is that left hairpin. But there's different approaches and different lines. You can go defensive, you can go side by side, because what it does then do is give you an opportunity uh, through what is now the Hans Ernst to old Audi S. So a lot of opportunity. It's my favorite part of the track because I think it's also the most technical. And then you've got that super big brass knocker commitment through uh, through the roller coaster section which is up and down and blind and oh my word hang on for dear life now all of those sections form up the second sector and that's where we saw a lot of the time is because it's so technical it's just so tricky getting the uh, lining up the roller coaster going to the downhill through the nameless section that nameless section like you said so many lines but it depends on how you want to be set up for the Hans Ernst corner later on. So if you're making the overtake, yes, there's one line, but if you're looking for time, there's this ideal line there that is so, so difficult to hit. And one little mistake there, especially if you're battling, you'll see someone like Jadwan extend his lead, which is now what he's been able to do in the one point two second. Yeah, it's, a great, it's a great battle here for second and third. It was nice to see Bruno uh, Cuddly as you said, obviously getting uh, set-up help from, uh, I believe, Raffaello Marcello, yes. who, uh, who, who races... Um, for Mercedes Benz, super, super fast driver. We actually uh, spent some time interviewing him when they were down for the Kyle Army 9 hour. That guy is is really, really quick. So it looks like the advice he's been given is certainly helping him. If you remember, he started in, in amateur at Kyle Army and he's worked his way up and was uh, pros at Silverstone two weeks ago, around two, and putting on a great uh, a great showing here, um, top 10, and, um, and splitting the VW group domination. So good job. Yeah, it's nice to see a little bit of variation in the top 10 over there as uh, the Audi and the Porsche still battle without Jordan Chirac running a smidgen wide there. 
now the gap's still 1.2 seconds. Jordan Shirak must be thinking, I've got Issa behind me. I've got Jadwak in the distance. He's managed to keep that 1.2 second gap. The question now is, what is Issa going to do? Like we said earlier on, should he wait back or should he try and get past? Because as we know, the tires on the Porsche might not do well later on. But then again, this is so complicated because then again, we saw earlier on the lead Audi spun out on turn one in a way that was very unusual, which means that the Audis could also be suffering from tire wear later on in the race. Yeah, I just think, I mean, it's also a 50 minute race, so there's also driver error and fatigue that comes in. It's a, you said, it's a technical track and, and when we were chatting to Bernard King uh, after his race, he was saying like, dude, you can't blink here. You know, there's no time. It's 4.2 Ks, but there's, it's a track when you watch, you kind of go, there's no place for the car to have a rest or for the driver because it's just one corner links to the next so it's very easy and a bit of pressure to make a mistake or if you feel you're comfortable in the lead to also just get a get get a wheel wrong for me this is Zaire's worst nightmare because he needs to get in front manage the pace so he can manage the tires he does not need to be in a dogfight but for us this is kind of like the Schumacher Sebastian Vettel era where we applaud when somebody else mixes it up with them so I'm, I'm stoked to see Bashir up there because it also gives the rest of the field a chance I, I think coming into this they were all going no one can touch their essay he's like he's a god when it comes to sim racing so for me it's good that it's been mixed up because it gives uh, it gives encouragement and motivation to the rest of the field 100 percent what sells a battle what sells a rivalry is the fact that somebody else can win it and that's what we're seeing here today as that's leslie willifant over there going down the inside of quake classes is he going to get it two cars now going down the inside of turn one as you were saying earlier on turn one is a fantastic place to overtake by the looks of things and leslie willifant Th that is he gets it I, no, 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 Jason's held his position, so that was a move, that was an attempt by, by Quaid on Jason. Ah. But it'd be great to see that on a replay again, because what I love about that is it shows you turn one, that you can, there are two lines through there, you can go around the outside, Jason obviously had the safer inside line, went defensive early down the start finish straight, and held that line, but when you run up the outside of that camber curve, it's hard to get on the power, and that's what gave Jason the better drive out of that corner that he can hold on. But it really, for me, feels like Jason doesn't have the pace that yeah. Quaid and Leslie have, and he's kind of holding everyone up. He is the cork in the bottle of champagne at the moment. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to get past him. There's a massive gap now to Zahir. Um, so I think they need to get past Jason and get past him quickly. And I think something's going to happen here because have a look at Leslie having a having a look at Quaid as well. Oh, and he's having a go. This is through the RDS. That is, well, side by side. Like three that, yeah. happen. This corner That's opens up. Two cars can go. This corner opens up. That's great driving, giving each other space. Fantastic. Oh, unbelievable stuff there. So, Quain Classens is the car we're looking at now. That's the Burgundy car behind him. Is Leslie Oliver putting under immense pressure. Jason Abs may are now managing to get away from all of that. I got a bit confused with all these Porsches there earlier. And Abs may have did something quite unusual by going defensive. Um, but, but actually not, Ernest. That's what's... Oh, something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. Abs may have pulled off. What's Abs may have pulled off. I mean, you know, he's had some issues with uh, his steering wheel in, the, in oh, recent races, oh, so I really hope it's not a, a rehash of that. And I was about to say, I mean, I mean, I don't think he was the cork in the, you know, the the guy slowing the train down. I think that he was dragging the guys along. I think that he was um, giving them targets to to hit break points, etc. So I think that that he was setting the pace there and dragging the guys with him and unfortunately something's gone wrong there oh. sure. what a yeah, so, so people know i mean you can't have a mechanical fail on oh, we've got the audi going off in the back but that's robert whiting that's outbraked himself through there i mean you can't have mechanical failure in terms of the cars but you certainly can have some uh yeah. technical errors with with the, the hardware that you're using in terms of steering sometimes and other guys computers crash and that's the end of things as well yeah, you know what, I, I, I'm kind of going to disagree with you, John. I know they were giving, he was the perfect guy to, to pick the brake markers, but have a look at the gap that opened between third and fourth place and how the guys bunched up. It wasn't that close. Morgan was way further back. All 
the guys got concertina behind Jason, I think the pace was with uh, with Quaid and with Leslie behind, and it was just on this circuit very very difficult to get past Jason. So it's pity that that, that ended like that because you had a look. The minute the two Porsches went door to door, Leslie and Quaid, it gave Jason a little bit of breathing space for him to make a gap. But Morgan's having a look at uh, at them now as well. But this is interesting racing. It's a tough track. You follow my leader and you've got to be committed for a pass and it's not easy to do when the guys are on very, very similar lap times and, and equally experienced. Yeah, in fairness, I mean, those guys were just, there's nothing between them, was there? It's so close, such close racing. Another car that is coming into the fray is Charles Wilkin, the real-life race driver who has been fast, at, especially at Silverstone, mixing it up with the front runners and Silverstone and struggling to find a little bit of pace here, but he is coming up to this race, and uh, let's see if we can get him a mix here. Uh, th this is 20 minutes down, and um, Bashir has not extended that lead. It stayed at a second, so Zare and Jordan are flipping, keeping each other honest, and, and Bashir is obviously not able to, to make a breakaway, and, and I thought that might happen with the two of them battling, but this is a fantastic race, and one that we've really been looking forward to, where it's close, but I tell you, the man driving possessed at the moment is Leslie Olifant. He is looking so racy and uh, really putting Quay Classens under massive pressure. Bruno is now in the t in eighth position in that uh, in that Soul uh, AMG running in the top ten. We look at Jason Webb and the other Merck is in twelfth, now inheriting that place that obviously Jason with his technical uh, errors put him out of the race. There's a, a look at Jason. Nice to see him looking through the front uh, window, not going sideways. A super experienced racing driver, a hell of a cool guy, a monster athlete, a monster driver and having fun with the guys. I think he's loving getting to do this. Oh, he's loving this. He tells me he's got a setup at home, has been doing hours and hours of sim racing, trying to keep shop for the drift season when it comes out. So he is absolutely loving getting into competition. And he told me this kind of pressure situation, he loves it. He loves uh, the, the high pressure stakes. And yesterday in the final five minutes, set his fastest time. So that just shows that when the going gets tough, you know, he's got that championship mentality. You, you know what's you know what's super cool with him as well? I mean, we do the we do the commentary for uh, Jim Carner Grid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ken Block series and that is when you speak about him coming from a karting background in Jim Carner the drifters really struggle because it's all about crazy horsepower and lighting up the tires and in Jim Carner it's not about that and you end up getting guys with little underpowered 200 kilowatt cars smashing the guys coming there with 500 horsepower it's a great battle on screen as I'm talking and that is where that smoothness the racing driver mentality of him comes along so he can drift but he also knows how to keep a car pointed in a straight line um, and that's what made him so so devastating in uh, in Jim Carner grid so nice to see him also expanding their driver skill set you know at the end of the day you want to drift you want to rally you want to circuit race you want to sim race why not do it all you can you can from the company to be home now as one of the artists goes down the inside there that's right that's under Rip pushed wide and that is Cody Sherrod look at what he's done yeah. maybe he had that drive through yes. but um, what am I seeing he's got another stop go penalty of 30 seconds oh, oh, and oh no Ferrant and uh, Sherrod come together there and Sherrod now has to make another stop go penalty obviously try to carve his way through it's not the easiest circuit to come from the back and I think maybe he might have got tangled up a little bit too much well, well, well listen I mean I didn't think he would make his way through the field as quickly as he did knowing how quick his drivers are but it gives you an idea of just how fast he is but Jono is that a is that a penalty that you have, have implemented or is that a game no a game it wasn't a game? from us um, the stop go 30s are game implemented and I suspect um, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I suspect that that comes from corner cutting, because he had a drive through from the from the start where he was out of position. Yeah, um, he was so cut the corner though. No, you, you know, there, there's a, there's a one section here where you actually see it's got um, it's got the it's not asphalt. It's got like the paving section on the inside. I've seen a couple of the guys. It's through a right hander that the guys take a take a very direct line. So maybe he's just been doing that over and over, but. Jonathan, you get the notification, you get the warning. So is there any any other reason that he could get a 30-second stop go? Um, no, no, no. He wouldn't get it for um, car contact or any such thing. It would only be for corner cutting. And it may be uh, maybe when he did like an extreme corner cut. Yeah. So um, 
at one of the chicanes or something where he just completely missed the corner. I think that might be the spot there because there's not many places here where you can go off circuit and gain an advantage. In fact, most of the places here you get punished. Yeah, but you know, you know what the problem is there. I imagine if he was on his own and he overshot the chicane, no problem. But he probably gained positions, which is why they would have done that. And knowing the pace yeah. that he has, and the fact that he's on a comeback drive. Is probably, is probably what ended up costing him. And we saw it in the previous race where the guys made contact, they went sorry, gave the position back, then there's no issue. And it's probably something that he should have done there, but that's a, that's a relative inexperience. You said he's 17 years old, we haven't seen him race here before. So that's the sort of craft that'll come with knowing the game and how the racing works as well. Well, oh, look at that battle, it's still, look it's at that, day. it's point under a second now to Bashir. Maybe this is a point where the Porsches, um, Starting to feel a bit of a bit of struggle getting the front end to to turn, um, but the battle with Jordan and, and Zahir has been unbelievable. Great, great driving, and Jordan got a cool head on him. Such a cool head. Uh, 21 years old. He's only been playing the sim now for the last two months. He played before, um, but has been off the scene. He hasn't raced for about two years now, and start picked up the sim about two months ago. And as you can see, like a duck to water, just getting back in the seat and setting those times. What yeah, a cool head. head. To just ignore the two there because it's obviously not. He's in third. That is your top three that you can see on that on that picture now. Bashir Jadwad, who basically from second position on that rolling start got the jump on Zahir and got it done into turn one into Tarzan corner and hasn't looked back. And then uh, Jordan and just to recap, Jordan and Zahir had consecutive coming together through this little section through turn two through Gerlach Kink and then uh, into Hugenholz and eventually Jordan had the bigger shoulders and muscle passer here and that's how it's been ever since 14 laps later and they still hammer and nail at it it's unbelievable and the gap to Bashir Jadwat between 0.8 and 1.2 seconds it's been pretty consistent between all three of them uh, it's so interesting just the pressure that that, that uh, Shirat must be feeling and now is starting to get a little bit closer yeah, I'm just having a look on the on the timing boards as well because we were obviously spending a lot of time with the the on track action with Quaid and, and Leslie and Jason Upsmire before um, he had issues with we're assuming like John has said they had some problems with his steering system maybe that's what happened we've gone back to that action now that seems to have calmed down maybe the guys have decided hey, well, we need a breather we buggered from from that from those couple of intense laps but um, it looks like Quaid's got uh, got a bit of breathing space over Leslie now. I'm hoping, because we love to see door-to-door -door stuff, that that's going to change in the next lap or two. And Morgan has dropped even further back as well. So this is really the race to watch at the yeah. moment, is yep. our top three. And you don't get to say that often, because usually in this, the races are further down in the field. And what's interesting is that if Issa gets past Sharat, has he got extra pace in the bag to chase down Jadwat? That is the big question here. Yeah, at the moment, he's been on top of Shirat, the exact, basically dictating the distance that he wants to be behind him. But Shirat doing a fantastic job of taking that pressure as we make our way halfway. We're just about coming up to the halfway mark now. And the top three is still in it. Yeah, I'm just looking down. I see our Raymond, uh, Raymond Duggan down in 22nd. This little mention to him, he was one of the two guys, him and Donny Miller, that have moved up from... Uh, Pro-Am round two to doing battle with the pros. He had Zanfort in round three, and uh, he's obviously the, the, the best of those guys. So that's a great showing from him, and obviously going to score some some serious points now running in the in the pro category. So well done to him. Just ahead, Zander Roots in the Audi. We've seen a lot of him. You've got Cody Sherrod, who's obviously had a drive through. He's still got a 30 second stop go penalty. So yeah, he's having a bit of a bit of a, a nightmare. Um, first race out, but expect a lot of him. The boy's got raw pace. As we get back to this top three battle here, and now it looks like Jadwat's starting to get a bit of a gap. Now these two are properly starting to battle the Audi and the Porsche second and third. Uh, Sherat a little bit offline there. I think he made a tiny mistake, starting to feel the pressure a little bit now from Essa. Essa now showing that he can chase as well as lead. Um, maybe he's a complete race car driver, but at least we know now that he is beatable. And as I was saying earlier on, what makes a competition is the fact that you've got someone that's not unbeatable. You can't have one guy dominating a series, then it's not competitive. But we've now shown that Issa is human and that he can, at least for now, halfway through the race, be overtaken. I, lo I, lo I love that block line through there because there's no way if you both adopt that, that safer inside line, 
there's no way through. They're both giving the same drive out of that corner, so it's good racing. And then what I, what I asked for, Leslie's back on the back on the tailpipes of uh, of Quaid, so that's fantastic. Uh, and good. Going at it. I see Chris Heineke has picked up a 15 second stop go penalty as well, and I'm assuming that's also going to be game generated. So um, no, that's not a that's not a stop go. That's a time penalty. Yeah, that was me. What what? Uh, well done. What happened? Uh, incident with himself and Marcus Stain. Um, outbreaks outbreaked himself and knocked Marcus Stain to the moon. <laughs> yeah, well, Not, yeah, we, we, we saw that we saw that in race two with record van Collier in, yeah. uh, in in the Bentley getting knocked out as well and, and and that penalty being awarded so at least that's done so he yeah. now has the target he knows what he's got to do he's got to just be 15 seconds ahead of that trans- yeah, and, and in all honesty we have been quite um consistent in our um you know dishing out of these penalties of guys when they do the tap from the rear um because they have been warned uh, quite a bit before in drivers briefings and stuff to you know be aware of the safety zone around yourself and the driver ahead of you so you know you get the guys that'll make a dive and that'll um go for an overtake and that's slightly different to when the guys uh just drive too close or outbreak themselves and then just uh run the guys race ahead of them Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, that it's, it's important to make that distinction, and I'm glad that you guys have systems in place to make sure that the guys don't do that maliciously. As the top three now start to bunch up a little bit more, the gap down to 0.7. Oh, what? What a fantastic sight to see these guys make it through the roller coaster like this. It, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, just, Jono, going on what you were saying there, I mean, in, the, in that race, it was Byron Walker in the Ferrari that I'd braked himself into that RDS, and it was yeah. cool. At the time, we were actually on board with them. And you literally could see the frantic working of the wheel going, oh, I've messed this up. How do I avoid contact? So, you know, those cases are pretty cut and dry. And it's yeah. good that penalties get, a, get get issued, you know? It is unfortunate because nine times out of ten, the it's not malicious. The guy yeah. has not knocked the guy on purpose. But we have to take a stance against um, drivers. Um, driving past the, you know, for lack of better phrasing, driving past their skill level um and you know you need to flow with the guys you need to uh, you know i'm talking myself into a circle here but um, running out of talent i'll say it running out of talent (laughs) (laughs) that's the thing you know um the mistakes happen and racing incidents happen but there's there's still got to be a distinction between this guy could have done it better he could have dealt with the situation better yeah, yeah. Uh, whether it's breaking earlier or giving the guy ahead of him more space or just setting up an overtake slightly better than he did um, was it was it in the same was it in the same place as in the prime okay. it was into the chicane okay so again i mean just to be fair as well i mean it's so easy to miss a break point here because both can be, but most of the approaches and when you're sitting on the back end of a car like that and it literally is a split second you know uh, they're not yeah. coming back from a hail mary so you know, it's not always it's so easy to make that mistake. It is driver error. But unfortunately, what usually happens is the guy getting tapped up the rear is the one that suffers the most. Oh, big oh. Reaction, and he's lost it. Oh, no. S has lost wow. it. And wow. that's the spot that we were talking about. If the Porsches lift off there, they spin out, and yeah. uh, Shirat oh. made an error. If we can get a replay of that, oh. I think he reacted to Jordan Correct. running a bit wide through that corner. Yeah. And changed his line because we saw he did one grab on the wheel and then and then lost it. It'll be great to see that on a on a replay if we can, because that was a great save because that could have ended in tears in the inside wall or in the kitty litter on the outside. So, so a good save there. But that's um, oh, that, that's opened up opened up wow. the big time now. These that guys is, will have a chance. That has opened up the championship in a big way. That is a meaningful incident right there that just happened. We saw our championship leader and the winner of the last two races. Zahir is a dominant before. Full replay let's, about let's to come. Let's have a look at this. I, I love the if we can go on board with him as well, but just we'll see the replay now. I'm sure Morgan ran a bit wide going through that right hander. We know that's down the hill, heavy under braking. Ernest, you were saying that's with the car. The Porsche gets really unsettled there because you're lifting off coming on the brakes. But I mean, you realize how dominant the top three were. Have a look, we're on board here now. Be good to go full screen on this. So, see, he's got he's run a bit wide. 
It looks like Morgan's right. I think I or should touch the curb on the inside, and that curb on the inside, you cannot touch that curb at all. If yeah. you do, that's going to happen. And oh, what a disastrous result for Issa. He now in third place. We're waiting to see how far back he is. No, he's still in third. I mean, they've got such a massive gap. I was going to say, that is how dominant our top three are, is that even with that big spin, he still maintained third position. So, uh, eight seconds down. Yeah, it's, 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 actually, it's, actually, it's actually incredible. So we're going to have a look here, full screen. I think you might be right. I just think touching that curve, that car so firmly sprung, there's going to be no give. But it here looked like go. Morgan ran a bit wide here. Yeah, he does. See, he's gone a bit wide. He's Ooh. touched grass. Grass and curb on the way in. I'd actually look there like um, he, he sniffed a bit of a gap. Yeah, and he went and for it. And he, was, and he was setting himself up for that. And then the gap was closing. But, yeah. but um, you know, a little bit of curb. That's it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because with that onboard I did, I mean, you definitely saw Morgan de- miss the breaking point a little bit, ran a little bit wide, and then the race of that Zaire is he's going to have a good go at it. We were on board seeing him have a, a big grab of correction there, and then obviously yeah. just just too much. That opportunity wow. was there, there and then the ahead of him. That opportunity was there, and then it turned into a deficit, and he's eight seconds down now at least. And uh, are we going to see a hard charge from Zaid Issa? There's still 17 and a half minutes of racing left. The gap now is 7.7 seconds to Shira. But Shira is 1.3 seconds down from the leader. But Jaguar, as we go on board now. I would, I would consolidate if I was in. You know, I, I don't think he's going to close that gap. I mean, he was sitting on the tail of Jordan lap after lap. And they weren't, he wasn't, they, they weren't closing the gap. So I think for him to try and close that gap now, I think he's going to be a real tall ask. I think... The sensible driver that Zaire is will be to consolidate, take maximum points from here. I don't think you can do better than third unless someone makes a mistake up front. But this is a great battle here, and he's got enough of a good puff over these guys. But have a look at Leslie. That so is close. commitment. Yeah, under braking. So, so heavy. Oh, man. Look it's so touching that. that curve. And look at the exit point as well, because you can't run onto the kitty litter there. You're in trouble again. This is cool. <laughs> There is a lot of trust between these two drivers right now. Oh, he goes up the <laughs> He has an opportunity here because check it this. He's got the opportunity. If he can stay around, he, do try and go for an undercut or stay around the outside. Two cars can go together here. Now he should have the inside if he can get the drive, which he doesn't. Pity, because he would have had the inside for the RDS. We saw that move in the Pro Am race, so it is doable. Such fantastic driving from these two guys. Quaid Classens, Leslie Olafant over here. And uh, Quaid, teammates with the current leader. Um, and these guys are going to be going at it for a, for a long time. We've got Cadley over there in the uh, black Mercedes Benz on screen, running in eighth position at the moment. Yeah, he, with it. He's chasing Shaw Wilkin down here. So listen, he's doing a flipping good job. I and mean, we were saying how nightmarish this car is to drive. Um, it's super fast, but from a handling point of view on a track that's undulating and changing direction like this, or well, whatever Rafael Marcello has told him, uh, he's certainly put into good use because he's on the back of Charles Wilkin. This is this is a great result, sitting in eighth position. Well done, man. I'm I'm, I'm loving seeing uh, the Merc doing so well. It's great. Yeah. Guys are definitely progressing, and that's another thing we're seeing uh, over the course of the last couple of races, um, Marius, is that the guys are improving. All of the guys are are practicing some of the guys more than others and I think that there are certain guys that are going to come up through the field that are going to get better and shift down some of the guys that are more dominant some of the guys that are on the front. Yeah listen the ankle tap for the drivers is lockdown stopping because I mean it was kind of equal opportunity for everyone to be home playing games 24-7 but as we're heading out of lockdown (laughs) people kind of have to go back to bloody work while other guys can stay at home like the 12 year old McCalls and the you know the 17 year old kids that aren't back at school yet so us professionals have to actually have a real job at some point well that is the curse of the sim race I spoke to Bashir Jaguar and he was saying earlier on the week he's hardly had time with the, with the Porsche because also work commitments he's in IT and, 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 and now it has become a fairly busy time for him uh, that, that's nonsense he's in IT it means he's playing the game <laughs> that's what it means I mean come on I want to use that as well I'm in IT oh so you play simulator all day yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you don't know. Look, some of this could just be tactics. I'm trying to get the truth out of these guys, but I'm you never you, know. He's sitting. He's leading the race. You're telling me, oh, it's been a tough week. You know, <laughs> my job. I haven't had a chance to practice. Oh, really? I oh, have a look. Yeah, it's been amazing. 
Yeah, so Bashir Jadwat in the lead now. Stole these two guys, quite class, and still in fourth position. Oh, little touch there as they came out. Leslie getting better drive out of that corner and uh, just running into the back of Quaid. But that's racing. That is what you expect, and that's what you want. Nothing malicious there. But that is pressure. Quaid knows that Leslie wants to come through. And uh, my money's on Leslie. He's, he's been consistently quicker. And this is for like the last maybe 10 or 12 laps from before with Jason, before he had his technical error uh, issue. It looked like Leslie was the man that was the quickest. And uh, I just wish he got a chance to get ahead because I think he would have had a good battle with the guys up front. I think so. I think uh, yesterday in seeding as well, he was also fastest for a while. Um, Leslie Oliphant definitely showing some pace over here. No, he's seeded not off. I mean, if I look at that, Zahir, Jordan, Bashir, and Leslie, and then Quay, those are the top five in seedings. He's having another look. He's going tighter, seeing if he can get better driver. He's going to have a real go at him here through. Watch it. Watch him have a go at the Porsche S's. I mean, the Audi S. Oh, He's on the wrong side here, though. But he can maybe get a try and do a little switcheroo. Quaid goes defensive. He goes through the S's. Quaid's going to cover his line and hope he's he can get better the drive. Out. Check the better drive out of the corner. It's uh, it's good driving this. He's tried he's tried yes. the inside line. He's tried the outside line. Fantastic he's trying, dude. Fantastic I'll tell you what, that, uh, that's a lot of effort that Quaid is going to. To, to defend without losing time because as soon as you start defending you uh, you lose pace especially on this circuit any deviation from the line here costs a lot and Quaid Class is doing a fantastic job of keeping a cool head staying in front and keeping the charging all of behind him as but Zahir has dropped that gap eh, from 8 seconds to 6.7 but you know what's quite you know what's quite interesting though, we were talking about the changes to Zandvoort for Formula One. That um, old Audi S, or as it's now known, the Hans Ernst corner, is also one of the corners that they've changed. So you've got a 45 right, and then it's like a long 180 left hander out. They've actually widened the exit of that left hander, so that it gives a guy an opportunity like there, under braking into that right hander to have a go, get on the power earlier. So you can get a drive a drive out of that. So maybe on the new formats of circuit, that would have been a great opportunity for Leslie to get past there. But obviously we're racing on the on the older loud. So those are sort of changes that they've made to the circuit for Formula One this year. Well, hopefully ACC can give us that update for next season. And we saw the Leslie Oliphant having a big look over there coming up real close. That was a bit uh, that was a bit scary. He came up right onto the back bump of Quay the under braking as we now cut to Cadley. Right behind our man, Charles Wilton there in the Porsche. Yeah, and Morgan's just ahead as well. So this potentially is a good battle with 11 seconds to go, 11 minutes to go. Having a look at Zahir, he's taken two seconds off of Jordan. So he's closed, but Jordan's falling back. Bashir uh, spending the week not driving because of his IT job <laughs> and has opened up a nice second and a half. <laughs> breathing. <laughs> Well, look at that gap. The gap went from 8 seconds to 5.6. I'll be interested to watch. I'm watching that. I'll be interested to see how he does with 11 minutes to go. If he can chop that down, uh, it, it shows his versatility. It shows that he's just not able to lead. Check it, Gervold, check it, Gervold, now in the Ferrari on the back of Jason Webb in, uh, in, in the other Merc. Jason's kind of had this, this position to himself the whole race. He was in 13th, then Jason obviously retiring up to my um gave jason that position there in 12 so everyone moved up the grid by one but um some real pressure now that um jason's being put under he's used to a bit of uh, a bit of pressure so delvault looking really racy in that uh, in that ferrari it's finishing strong i just got a message now that uh, um bashir is actually an accountant so either, either i got it wrong or he lied to me but i think i got it wrong i think he is an accountant but he, <laughs> <laughs> he did say he was busy this week um, and Bashir, I, I forgive you because an accountant <laughs> is a really serious job. IT as IT as a gamer, no one's going to believe you. But as an accountant, man, this, this guy can do my books because he can drive, and that's it's, that's top marks in my book. It's the middle of lockdown. Who's got any money now anyway? So I'm not sure who's the accounting work he's doing. <laughs> well, that, well, well, that's what makes it easy. Zero balance, zero balance. There we go. Your books are done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As we look now at Bashir Jadwat. Uh, in the lead by 1.5 seconds, keeping that gap. And Zaire Issa now down from 8 seconds to 5.1 seconds with 9 minutes to go. I'm no. going to do some sums now. And I don't see. think there's enough time left. I think that's, unless there's a mistake, I think that's how it's going to, that's how it's going to end. Uh, Zaire, we saw they're actually getting past. Um, that was the Aston Martin that um, one of our other guys had moved up from Pro-Am. 
um, Donny Miller getting out of the way from a, a hard charge in Zaire who's trying to make up for that error. Um, but I, uh, my prediction, unless somebody does something really stupid, I think that's pretty much how it's going to end. But he's under the five-second mark. So listen, clearly Zaire is a driver who likes to be angry because he's super, super <laughs> <Racing. dangerous. Yeah. laughs> Well, I'm doing calculations here, counting down the numbers, counting down the times and checking the rate that he's uh, able to catch the guys in front. He gained two tenths of a second there in 15 seconds. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Let's see as we once again join Quake Larson's and Leslie. Maybe, but guys really maybe do we can ask Bashir as the accountant while he's driving just to do the calculations <laughs> for us because I'm not so good at mathematics. <laughs> Me neither. That's why I need a pen and paper. That's what happens but, when you go to school in the Eastern Cape. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a good... This battle for fourth and fifth has been amazing. And, and I'd say Leslie has not given up. He's tried every line through this. Oh, and they've, they've touched going in there. Going to be hard for him to get back online. He's lost lots of time there. That's unfortunate. And there's oh, a yellow. definitely yeah. seems to hold the pace on this battle at the moment. Oh, yeah. And that yellow bumps over there through that uh, the Audi S's over there. It slows the car down quite a bit. So now we see yeah. uh, Clarkson's now getting a bit of a gap. Leslie's going to be a little bit unsettled. He's got to put his head down again now and start chasing him a little bit. Give him a lap. Watch. He's there again. He's, he's got unbelievable pace. Oh, and look at that. So that, something's happened with that. We've lost. Um, remember the battle that was building? I oh, know. Okay. That was with Jason Webb further back. But this is now Morgan's being caught by Charles Wilkin and he's dra dragged uh, Bruno Cudley along with him. So this is a fantastic battle to, to watch. And behind Arno Fasaki in the Audi is um, fending off uh, Patterson's port as well. So there are lots of little battles with uh, nearly seven minutes left to go. But this is going to be an interesting race there. Morgan looked like he had it comf comfortably blocked off. But Charles Wilkin having big pace at the end and that Merck coming along to the right. But just look at how close these guys are going through those very technical sections there. So difficult. We've got Patterson on the other live stream over there. That's 10th position just behind. And that's Kieran Chow. and Arno Fasaki. We saw them in the background. So two battles to watch. And they literally one's just ahead of the other. Have a look at Arno going super defensive. Kieran trying the outside. He's going to try and do a switchback here as well. Um, again, so many lines through this previously Vodafone corner. Kieran getting on the power very early. This will give him an opportunity going through the Audi S. But have a look, leslie has got onto the back of um, of Quaid already, like we predicted. Look at that battle at the bottom on the live on the live pictures as well. Really, really interesting racing. So lots of action with six and a half to go. Lots of action. And so far I've seen that uh, Bashir or at least uh, Zahir S has been able to claw back about a second in about three minutes so he's not able to do anything now he's got you'll probably catch about two seconds up at this pace and we don't know maybe shirat's got something in reserve maybe shirat's going to sit on second place but if he needs to push a cap we also saw he was able to defend for quite a while as the uh cuddly goes around the outside there of uh, walker and have a look at have a look at the back i mean it's great racing because there's that other battle that we were watching with kieran he was trying through turn one and move on honor for Saki and the Audi didn't work. We're on board now with uh, with Bruno uh, Cudley. Great action. This I love. This is flat out commitment through here. One little error and there is nowhere to go. Have a look. There's no runoff here. See, there's a no barrier and then heavy under braking through here. And Bruno taking a slightly different line, running a little bit wider, but still managing to keep it on. And that's what I love. Different lines through here. Unbelievable, and we saw our fastest man on the day managed to make a mistake right there. So it just shows our technical is that they're going to the right hand, and our Bruno having a nice tuck underneath the back bumper of that Porsche going through the section where they have been seen to go too wide. Here. He goes around the outside of the Porsche, takes a slightly tighter line there, and uh, McCall now able to get away a little bit. Guys, we'll have a look at Jordan. He's dropped back to two, just over two seconds, and Zahir is down to three and a half with five to go. I mean, typical. He's just going to try and prove me wrong. Well, I said, that's a done. Like, you may as well consolidate your position at four <laughs> points. He's okay. going, Morris, you speak such rubbish. I'm a racing driver. I'm going for it. And, you know, this also makes you think mm, nonsense. They talk about the Porsche's tires going off because he's smashing in lap times. But have a look at this. This is going to be interesting. Into Tarzan corner. Who's going to be Jane? Who's going to be Tarzan? Oh, right hand gets it. And that's Check quite the, what, What's the drive that Leslie will get out of there as well? Man, 
But it's, it's this section over here, it's so tricky to overtake. But earlier on, we saw it's possible. Shirat did it, muscled his way through there. But, uh, oh, getting right. Oh, no! They can't contact. And Klaassen takes out. Oh, oh, my goodness. Leslie, Cla- Le- uh, Leslie Willifant, so he takes out quite Klaassen's there. Have a look at this battle now. That's just opened up. Morgan's going, thank you very much. Listen, that, that has <laughs> won the cards for many laps, and they've done well to hold off on it for so long. Oh no, what a pity as more guys now enter the mix. Cuddly now having caught up. Also in the mix now, right behind Shaw Wilkin. Cuddly and Shaw Wilkin are catching up to uh, 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 Leslie Willifant. Oh man, that was such an interesting spot for that to happen as well. Usually they match each other through there. I think the front driver might have been a little bit slower this time. Uh, uh, it's, it's, oh, check out this, a little, a little a Porsche sandwich. Um, Kieran was on the back of um, of Arno Fasaki and Robert Whiting's come back into it. Robert's been in that tenth position, lapping consistent times, but he's obviously got a bit of a, a bit of a late charge coming on. And um, I'm having a look. So you're down to 3.1 there in third place. So that looks like it's pretty consolidated. He has a replay. If you have a look at the bottom of the screen, let's have a look what happened. Yeah, under braking. Yeah, I just ran into the back of him. Oh, might have some touch, eh? Oh no. That's going to be interesting. Jonathan, enjoy that. <laughs> as soon as something like that happens, Jonathan goes, Ah, oh, now good work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one's going to make a that's going to make our, our cut for for our review, I think, this week. Yeah, we'll let Tasman deal with it, seeing as she wasn't yeah. there for commentary. That can be her baby to deal with. <laughs> oh, have, have a look at the two lines through there. Kieran having a look around the outside of Arno and uh, Robert saying, yo, that's, that's right, you guys you guys mess this up and I'm going to take two positions here. This is a great battle to the end with two and a half to go. I'm quite keen to see what's happening with uh, Bruno and Charles uh, because that was another good battle. Morgan obviously at getting that position from Leslie um, when him and, and Quaid came together. So a lot of action late in the race. And there it is. Have a look at that all over the back of Charles. That Merck has looked so solid at come the end of the race. It's got the pace. We know the Porsches have been moaning about their tyre wear. Maybe the Merck doesn't have the same problem. Well, if anybody's going to be able to defend, it's going to be uh, Mr. Walton over there. Many, many years of racing experience. Oh, that's so, and, and, and just behind them, have a look as well. Schall did go defensive into uh, the Vodafone hairpin there. be quite interesting to see as they get to the RDS. We, just behind this action, there's another battle going as well. So let's have a look if we can make a plan side by side. Korea. Oh, it's going to be trouble. Always. Well, does it again. Olafan does it again. Oh, oh no. These guys have to take evasive action. And have a look at score. Bruno, Bruno leapfrogged. He made four positions <laughs> today. It's like unbelievable. This was a great Kandy. drive. Unbelievable. So Bruno can be the man who's changed uh, uh, teams now. And Bruno and Charles actually used to be teammates. They're not teammates anymore. So the two of them uh, sorting it out on the track there with Cudley coming away with fourth position. Can you believe it? I love it. Three or four positions made as the guys fell over each other. You know, the little contact going through the through the Audi S there, I thought they'd actually managed. They touched each other pretty evenly, and I thought they were both going to come out of it. But I think that's the difference between real contact in a situation like that and, and what the game allows you with the parameters that are set in. You know, I think that wouldn't have been a spin in the real world, uh, and in the race, those sort of situations happen. Yeah, yeah because it was a bit exaggerated, yeah. That was weird because they were done with the contact and then spun out. It seemed very strange. And what's happened with Pashir? Because he's now slow. Have a look at this. Jordan's pulled back. Um, I mean, it's, it's coming to the last lap, but I mean, he's basically found a second on that lap. And Zahir has obviously found a second as well. So maybe it was getting through the back markers that Pashir got held up and Jordan <laughs> found the line through. But I mean, it's, we're coming up to, to the, the end of the lap now. He'll get the flag now. So not much opportunity. One lap to go. Uh, and this is the last lap, so I think Bashir has to just keep his head down. He's an accountant, he'll be cool, he'll be calm. And uh, Perhaps Bashir was trying to slow down so he didn't have to do an extra lap. <laughs> that didn't work. Speculation, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, ac- the accountant doing the numbers. Bashir yeah. is so cool under pressure as well. He's led many races like this before. He's won many races like this before. As long as he keeps it together, he's got one more lap to go about a minute away from victory all he's got to do is finish this last minute of a 15 minute race and 
he'll be okay. First position for Bashir Jagwan, right behind him, Jordan Shira and Zahir is the top three looking quite predictable. But number four man, Bruno Kadli, my surprise and for sure driver. I know he got lucky, but what a drive from Kadli. No, uh, you know what, I don't, I don't want to say lucky, eh? because it looked like that AMG was working really well. He was always in the top 10, he had good pace, but especially towards the end of this race, he seemed to really be quick. He closed the gap on Charles, he closed the gap on Morgan, and he was in with a real shout. And I think he looked like the car that's looked after its tyres best. And at the end of the day, you've got to be in it to be able to benefit from the incident. If he was three or four seconds back, nothing would have happened there. So he was putting them under pressure and uh, and well deserved i mean that's fantastic to see that amg uh, up there and i see jason's obviously dropped back a little bit now just looking to see where the other merc was he's down in in 14th he was having that battle with diavolt Noll, if you remember in the ferrari and now him and and stain have got passed so this is a great drive by by bruno cadley fantastic but i think leslie and quaid are going to be a little bit grumpy because they certainly had the pace and just kind of fell over each other um, in some instances really cost them in this race well, there you go. The race has run for at least most of the drivers. Bashir Jarwan crosses the line in first place. Jordan Shirat, the 21-year-old, going to be happy with that. And the man that is now finally proven to be mortal. I think you're right there, Marius. I think this is good for the series. That Zahir Issa was his third. Yeah, but look at look, look at this this battle right in. This is what we love about GT racing. I mean, after 50 minutes, and you've got the rest of the top 10 all having a full go. That's Arno Fasaki in the last Audi in 10th place. Look at that battle across the line. That is fantastic. Right? That's what makes this exciting for me. Well done. We don't like seeing that, though. That would never happen in the real world. Um, I know the guys have been asked to kind of finish the line, across the line, and, and, go, and, and take a nice slow down lap. But I think after 50 minutes, the guys are, are exhausted. So Maybe what a great race. Fantastic. Yeah. Jason Webb crosses the line there in 14th position right behind him, Heineke. And that is it from us for now. We'll be right back after this with the points, results and some more talk about what we just saw. What a fantastic race. We'll see you guys shortly. So now we're saving. I've been going to the top and I got what it asks for. I know that they hate that. race it has been and uh, interesting to not see our third place man in that middle slot there Zahir Essa a fantastic drive either way but one tiny mistake forced him right back he still managed to stay in third though that was impressive either way Marius well you know we've been deliberating our driver of the day and I actually just thought we, we didn't in our band to talk about Jordan because think about the mm -hmm. massive pressure he was under in second from <laughs> for how many laps in that race and Zero ended up making that bit of a mistake that dropped him further back so Jordan's up there Bashir unbelievable got it done from the start and kept his cool and composed um, lap after lap brilliant drive um, great top three great for the series for our new sponsors that came on board you did it at the right time because this is not going to rattle rattle and mix things up we've got Paul Ricard next week um, a very, very different circuit, modern circuit, and it's going to be interesting to see how the guys go. But now people know Zaire can be beaten.
Yeah, exactly. And as I say, for competition to take place, you need to have a competitive environment. And that's exactly what we had now. And we spoke to Bash last week and he was saying that Zahir Essa was untouchable. Uh, but that's clearly not the case. And he's proved that. We're going to bring Bash in here now for a chat, uh, Marius. I'll be keen to hear what he has to say. He's going to be joining us shortly. But you're right. The young Shirat taking that pressure all the way to the finish line. Unbelievable stuff. But the man of the moment, Bashir Jadwat, Bash, welcome to our virtual commentary booth. How was the race? What happened? Tell me more. Did the Porsche survive? Did those tires survive? I'm just, I'm, I'm so exhausted after that one. <laughs> it was hard work. Um, I got a bit lucky. I think if um, Jordan and Zahir were not fighting, I don't think I had the pace to stay up front. No, um, them, them fighting allowed me to sort of maintain a gap and save my tires while still keeping the lead. Um, so I still had a bit of tire wear at the end. But um, yeah, I think uh, I got a bit lucky. Bashir, I'm going to disagree with you, dude. That was an unbelievable race. That is how it works in racing. You were consistent. Your lap times were amazing. You know, we were. I was abusing you because we thought you were IT and you were saying, oh, you didn't have time this week, you know, with your career. Meanwhile, you're an accountant and that was a textbook flipping race brilliantly done from the start um yeah dude exhausted but you you deserve a good rest tonight that was brilliant driving thanks marius uh, that was uh, probably one of my best drives but i still feel that i got a bit lucky there i managed to jump zaire at the start and i think um, if i hadn't done that it would have been game over but um yeah fortunately i managed to get him at the start and hold him up a bit <laughs> and yeah that that sort of um that sort of helped the, the result at the end. Well, you would have uh, heard because you had, you had helmets on, but that's exactly what we were talking about just um, in the formation lap was that the prediction was that somebody's got to do it into turn one, get an early, get, get the lead away from zero because if he gaps it, he can set his pace. And that circuit, I don't know what your feeling is, but a circuit like this is so technical, there's no time for you to rest and break. To get into a rhythm and a rhythm early is critical and, and you want to do that in front where you're not worrying about watching your mirrors and, and back to the driver. Absolutely. And the other thing on this track is in the slip, the front end wash will just exacerbate the tire wear. So as it is, I was having um, in practice, I had a hell of a lot of uh, front end draining. Um, but yeah, fortunately, I'm, I'm just grateful that the result came because uh, um, yeah, that was, that was awesome for me. <laughs> Fantastic drive. All, 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 all next week. What, what, are, what are your feelings there? Because I mean, I, I hate the new circuit. You know, I love tracks like this. You know, Paul Ricard looks like a massive shopping center with lots of painted lines. I agree with you. I agree with you. It's got no character for me, that track. But uh, we'll give it a go. I mean, I think I think the Bentleys and the Mercs will probably do well there because of the long back straight. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't driven the track with the Porsche yet, so I'm not sure how the BOP works on that one. But um, we'll give it a go and see what we can do. Um, I'm sure the last sector should favor the push, but I think the first... Uh, even the first may actually favor the Porsche, but I think the middle sector should favor the, the high power cars. I'm going to agree with Marius on that one, Bashir. There was this, yeah, there was no luck involved. You took that first position on that first corner. You held that lead the entire time under immense pressure from some of the best guys in the country. Well-deserved win from me and the team here. Just a fantastic drive. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks to the other guys as well. Jordan and Zahir, they were pushing so hard. I mean, it was awesome for me to watch as well <laughs> with them fighting Hammer and Tong behind me. But uh, that's what ultimately gave me a bit of breathing room. But yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. How he has time to still watch the racing. I I don't know, but uh, the person that was involved with that, with that racing, with Essa, Jordan Sharat, he's going to be joining us now as well, Marius. And uh, you know, you know, you know, you do that. I love as a driver in the lead, you just have a little glance in your mirror and you see two oaks having a full battle, and you just start grinning because you know that's going to help you. Yes. And uh, and and Jordan, um, he's joined us now on the chat. Jordan, dude, you, you were so fast two weeks ago at Silverstone, there were a couple of uh, one little driver error that cost you, ended up in fourth. But man, the pressure that you absorbed from Zaire as a lap after lap, you in with a shout for my driver of the day. Obviously, Bash up at the top is 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 the guy to take it. But what a race from you absorbing that pressure for so many laps. Yeah, thank you guys. Really appreciate that. And um, yeah, it was such an intense race. Like you, I couldn't even like almost breathe. I was so intense, well, intensely concentrated on my wheel, of course. But, uh, yeah, Zaheer was there for a long time. He was so fast as well, so 
Um, I managed to obviously keep him behind, but uh, it kind of gave Bash a bit of a, a breather. But I knew if Zaheer got past, he would have passed Bash and obviously drove away. So I made it my ultimate thing for him to stay behind me the whole race. But that's what's, so, that's what's so awesome about the circuit, though. I mean, it's exactly what you said. I mean, 4.2 kilometers, but there's no place for car or driver just to have a chill because it literally is fast flowing. Everything linking up so technical, so unforgiving. You must be you must be knackered. That's an exhausting 50 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I actually got a sweat here, I must say, and I've got aircon on. That's <laughs> which, what is, how, yeah. I've got to ask you how, what was it like? Uh, with uh, um, Esa behind you like that and still managing to keep that pace. Didn't it slow you down having to go defensive all those times? Um, to a certain degree. So like uh, I would only defend where the Audi is a bit stronger. So perhaps like the last sector on that inside because the car kind of rotates easily and gets to power. So I wouldn't lose as much because I would gain like three, four tenths or maybe three tenths to them. So when I was defending, I was only losing like maybe two tenths. So wow. I was kind of stabilizing oh. it as I was going through, yeah. Yeah, your car looked very strong through turn one, through Tarzan, because you got really good drive out of that out of that corner, especially the first laps. Maybe Zaire was running a little bit deeper in there. But yeah. the car looked very strong coming out of out of turn one. Yeah, I mean that obviously was an advantage for the Audi, but I mean the Audi was a bit disadvantaged here. So I was I'm pretty happy with my drive to actually keep it with them. Um yeah, and I'm happy with my second. And well done to Bash. He deserved that 100%. And obviously, he's here too. I mean, it was awesome racing. I've never had a race like this on some racing before. So. Okay, but, but listen, I'll chat to you a butty because I, I think he just had some issues in terms of, you know, the, the, the game and how the functioning works because he also had really good pace. And obviously, having two guys sharing knowledge on setup on the on the Audis is going to be fantastic for next week. So, um, yeah, I, I, what, what, are you, what are your vibes on Paul Ricard? I, I hate the circuit. I think it's silly. <laughs> Um, but have you driven it? Um, yeah, I have driven it, but not like extensively like Zandvoort. But um, it should favor the Audi. There's a few long straights, although there are a lot of twisty sections, which will um, obviously benefit the Porsche. But I think uh, the Audi should be good there. And of course, with my brother too, we can actually like test uh, together and obviously work twice as fast. Yeah, well, the, jo the joys of guys not having to go to work. Eh? I think it's going to be an exciting, an exciting uh, round. But Jordan, well done. Fantastic, uh, fantastic results in second, backing up your your fourth from two weeks ago at Silverstone. Brilliant. Thank I you, think uh, you might, I think you might be right about uh, things changing for the guys that have to work over the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is a very real situation that you have guys that are now going back to work as of Monday, and not quite as much time to set up. A man that told me that he didn't spend that much time setting up. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, Zahir Essa, our third place man today and our top qualifier. I'll be interested to hear what he has to say. He's going to be joining us shortly. I think Zahir has just come into our virtual commentary booth. Zahir Essa, how was that for you? What intense pressure you were applying to Shirat there? What, what was the race like? Hey, man, how's it going? Very um, good. Yeah, this, I mean, we were chatting a bit uh, before the race, and I told you this, this track is just almost impossible <laughs> to overtake on. And uh, with Paul being on the outside, I knew, like, if the guy next to me got a good start, if I was on Paul, I, that I'd lose the lead going into the first corner, and that's what happened. But uh, weirdly enough, like, the most annoying thing, so the driver name tags in the game uh, have a completely black background. So going into turn one, it's just this black background thing right at my braking marker. So oh. <laughs> I missed my braking point twice, so that allowed Jordan to get past. A bit of bumping here and there, but it wasn't intentional. And then after that, um, sticking behind him, like I wasn't trying to do much. I was trying to stay close to him. And through that fast right-hander with the Porsche, I don't know what it is. As soon as you get close to a car, it just decides to say cheers and off it yeah. went. So. The first, the first one I did catch, it did it to me once, and then the second one, I just, I was just got, just got a bit on the curb, and then it was gone. So yeah, it also is there when we, when we looked at that on the replays, we watched that a few times. It also looked like uh, Jordan ran a bit wide. It was almost like a bit of an opportunity there because he, he, he missed the turn in on that corner, and, and I think it almost looked like you wanted to have a go, and touched a bit of curb and, and, and gone through there. But that's what um, Bash was saying. It's very difficult when you're in the draft of, of the car in front of you. You've got no no front end uh, no front end grip either. Um, so quite tricky, eh? It was. Uh, yeah, I wasn't. Uh, he did run a bit wide, but 
uh, you can't really go for any overtake there. So no, I, was no. just, I was just chilling out, biding my time, relaxing, and then suddenly the thing says bye bye. Um, we we yeah, were on board with you at the time. It was busy because we saw you do like one big grab at catching it and then the next one. But I mean, you did a great job not putting it in the barriers and not ending up buried in the beach. Um, so it's so a great, great, great drive in the end. But I mean, you know what? I, I know you like to win, but it's also good for the series because like we said, it, it's going to motivate everyone else that the unbeatable can be beaten. Um, changes things for you looking forward to, to next week now because yeah, now you've got some work to do. I do. I mean, it's quite early in the championship, so I'm not thinking about all that. It's, I think the main point is just you can't win them all, so try to finish as high up as I can. Uh, these were quite good tracks for the Porsche, I think. Um, so moving on to the next tracks, I expect other cars to be better. So I just need to keep with that philosophy and just try to finish as high up as possible and just see what happens after everything comes together. Oh, well, it was fantastic. I, lo I love the circuit. I mean, from a driving perspective, there's no chance for a break. There's, it's unforgiving. Uh, you must love driving it. Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like this track at all. Uh, I've been avoiding it on ACC. I don't know what it is. Uh, it is a challenge, of course, but um, it's just it's tough to overtake. And in the Porsche, it's just bouncy. It bounces you around. Um, but I mean, from a challenge point of view, I enjoyed it. And uh, the race was good. I really enjoyed that race. Oh, well, thank you. We, we, we loved watching it because it was good battles throughout. Uh, Paul Ricard next week? Yeah, no. Uh, that track's even worse. I mean, I don't know if you <laughs> even call it a circuit. Uh, Bash likes to call it a, a glorified car park. But No, no, it, it is. Somebody just took a car park and painted a whole bunch of crap lines on it. I hate these computer-generated yeah. circuits. But I mean, from a driving perspective, how do you think the Porsche is going to do there? Um, we know Bentley in the real world does a lot of testing there and they're quick. Uh, do you think that might be the case? Although there are no real Bentleys running at the top in the pro class, but that might change with the seedings next Saturday. Yeah, it could. I mean, that's the whole thing with the seeding. So track by track, if cars, other cars are stronger, then they'll be right, be right up there. So I do not know which cars are going to be strong and whatnot. But basically, the Porsche at bigger tracks like uh, Paul Ricard, I think it's going to struggle because uh, of the low top speed of the Porsche. But uh, I'm going to be doing everything I can. Well, I'm excited yeah. to see the guys mix it up some more. Um, thanks for joining us, Zaire. It's a good luck for the next round, but uh, I'm very glad to see the guys mixing it up. And I'm also glad to see Sherat in there in the mix of that Audi, giving the Porsches a bit of a run for their money. Marius, Paul Ricard next week. Uh, lots of blue lines, lots of straights. The Audis apparently might look good there. Man, can we just fast forward to the next round? We start getting <laughs> back, to the, back, back to the good old tracks. It's Monza. Just, the old Paul Ricard was so amazing in the old days. I just didn't really like what they've what they've done with the new layout. But this is what makes the series twelve rounds so exciting. Is like we know the drivers get to throw away their two worst results. You're not going to love every track, and your cars are going to be great at every track. And that's what makes for exciting racing. And this for me was a fantastic round because it's mixed things up. We had a great pro am race, fantastic pro race, and and a new winner with Bashir Jadwat. So. For me, I'm looking forward to Paul Ricard, not the track, just the racing. Unbelievable <laughs> racing so far. Jonathan, Jonathan Bentz, uh, before we go, any final words from you? Jonathan uh, Bentz, uh, not, not too much to do today. Uh, yeah, I've got I've got a list of things I'm going to have to deal with tonight now, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely like thrilled with how today went. Um, I, I gave the drivers a bit of a talking to in their drivers briefings and uh and the guys have really showed some class here today a lot of a lot of respectful driving a lot of a few incidents but you know mistakes happen you know guys will always contact each other you know whether they like it or not so you know we've got processes in place but super happy with how today went poor record oh that's going to be interesting i know the mercedes is very very um, BOP there, so awesome. I can't, can't expect much from the Mercury. Ah, oh, okay. So Cudley's going to be a bit further down the grid. Cudley could be our man of the match. One of the one of the drivers, I think, that's in it for the shot for driver of the day. But this event was made possible by our sponsors and partners. And I went to the production office the other day, and they've got about six or seven PCs running there, all sporting the latest AMD 
uh, technology, Elgato streaming software, Corsair, uh, gear and components. This is the stuff that makes this possible. So big thanks to our partners, AMD, Elgato, Corsair, and of course, Assetto Corsa, Kailami 9 Hour, and MSA. My name is Ernest Page, and I will see you guys at the next event. Marius, any final words? Bye-bye. See you next week. See you guys then. Let me in my zone, 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 What I'm doing cause I own that And I stay in the lab and I kill everything But I don't ever move from a car So yeah, I'm back in my home I'm working in the sauna off this way You got me a dream I'm a light to my soul We living just about to hit that song Balling can't beat me up Cause I'm back in my zone now Having a great strap I don't want my